Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I am Hazen Kugo, a chemical engineering graduate from Russia. Yes, I studied in Russia on the scholarship. So I get a lot of people asking me what scholarship can they apply to to study in Russia for free. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the Open Doors Scholarship. Yes, it is open right now. I'll put the link in the description. Make sure you go and apply. Now let's get straight into it. We are going to start by discussing some of the common questions around the scholarship. Now the first one is, is it fully funded? Well, the Open Door Scholarship is not fully funded. The tuition is paid by the government 100%, but your personal expenses, you know, travel, accommodation, and other expenses are on you. So this is where you should take note. But the accommodation in Russia is not very expensive, especially if you're living in the hostel. But if you're living in an apartment, that's when, depending on the city, it may be expensive. But if you're going to stay in the hostel, it's not very expensive. Travel is on you, personal expenses all on you. Now this leads me to the next question. How much is the monthly stipend? Now this is depending on the university. Some universities give higher than others. So just stick with me. We are going to go into the registration process. You are going to see the list of universities that are under the scholarship. So make sure you research them and there you are going to see how much but you are going to have an idea of how much the monthly stipend is but it is not explicitly written here so i also cannot explicitly tell you like this is the monthly stipend now the next question is can i work during my studies the answer is yes now you can work without any permit in russia just that as you're preparing for this scholarship you can start thinking about it what skills can you offer like for example programming are you a programmer that could work you can get some works on the site it could be remote or you could be in an office like can you teach english for example that is also something that you can do as a student over there so you can start thinking about it now if you are really optimistic that you're going to get the scholarship now the last question before we go into the application walkthrough yes i'm going to walk you through the registration i'm also going to apply as if i'm applying for the scholarship the last question is what language am i going to be studying in now, there are two languages. It's either you study in the Russian language or in English. So as you apply, make sure you check in with the schools, check their website to see what uh, language they're going to be taking the program you're applying for. If it is the Russian language, then if you don't have prior knowledge of Russian, you have to go through the preparatory language course. This is like foundation where they teach you the language for like one year. Then you can go into your program. But for English, since you know English, you can start direct. So don't worry if you are going through the Russian route. After the language course, after the preparatory language course, you don't have to apply again. It's all part of the program. After the one year, you can start your main course at the university. I thought I should get those questions out of the way. Now let's get straight into it. Let's begin the registration. So to begin, let's familiarize ourselves with the site. So once you go into the site, like I said, link in description, it's going to bring you here before you sign up let's look into you know the tracks that are open see applied mathematics like for me i'm going for chemical engineering so i'll most probably be going around here so here you're not going to see your course explicitly written these are tracks so whatever course you want to study make sure you choose the one closest to it here so chemical engineering is definitely under engineering and technology so you go here so as you go down here, you can see the schedule for, you know, bachelor, bachelor's, master's and PhD. As you can see, the scholarship started, the registration started 5th September and it's going to close. Yeah, as you can see, the deadline for portfolio submission is 20th November. So whatever document you want to submit, make sure you try and get it before this time and you submit all your documents. And then make sure you go to the site to familiarize yourself with everything here as you can see there's a first stage we're going to look into it all and then there's a second stage after you've been called they're going to send you an email if you pass the first stage and then and so on and so forth so let's get straight into it now come to the side and you click sign up so once you come here you're going to choose the language you're going to participate in the olympiad in so for us it's english now <laughs> Why would I choose the Russian language? Then your citizenship, Nigeria, enter. Here is going to bring you to where you're going to write information about yourself. 
your name these are just basic information phone number and so on after that now this is the interesting part if you are going for bachelors you're going to select which profile the course you're going to study is under if you're going for masters doctoral or postdoc for me it's masters so i'll most probably be going for this so here you can choose multiple tracks so that you won't limit yourself to one whatever track you choose you're going to write a test for it yes so choose multiple tracks so that god forbid you don't pass your test you have other tracks that you might pass along the way so engineering technology i'm interested in ai so i can choose applied mathematics and intelligence and i'm interested in chemistry and material science so these are the two tracks that i'm going forward with let me fill my form and then we can continue oh before that for your name it's very important you write what you have in your documents please to avoid issues in getting visa and stuff i know of a guy that didn't get a visa because of just one letter of his name like mismatch and stuff so make sure you have all these things clear and well written so i'm done filling my form so I've, i'm done filling my form of choosing all the tracks that i want so let's click all this to be able to proceed to then register so once you click register it's going to bring you to this page so on, on this page this is where you see all the tracks that you've applied to if you can remember these are the tracks i selected this is where you are going to add your education document see see where they wrote add here click here to add them this is also where you're going to include your motivation letter so for education document if you are going for bachelor's this is where you're going to upload your high school certificate uh if you are going for master's you sum submit your bachelor's and so on so there's this issue where you are done with school or you're about to be done and you still want to apply for the scholarship and your your certificate is not ready they are kind of lenient i noticed you can still submit your transcripts your final transcript or your previous grades just compile them and submit it before the end of the whole application process they might use the transcript not even they might they stated it in the q a section that they will use the transcript but when you're about to enter the university you should have the other documents ready now after all this because these are the most important things your education documents and then motivation letter and then the next one is entrance testing yes like i told you any track you choose you're going to be tested on it after that is achievement now see what they wrote here the maximum possible score not including testing at achievement so they want to see what you've done what you've achieved so in this place it's very important you add any certificate you have that is relevant were you the best in sport in your school write it were you do, did you have the best um research project write it even personal courses that you take on coursera udemy all these sites you can include them you can go to linkedin learning all these sites that have courses where you can get a certificate you can add all those certificates and no, put really. them here it will give you maximum possible score minus the testing so over here you can see other information this is your general information that you filled already as you can see i filled this already then when you click here under universities this is where you're going to choose your universities i may i just click this earlier randomly so for the courses that i chose let me see which universities that you have here now this is where you have to go and do your research like i told you earlier about the stipend you have to check here with the universities to confirm how much is it about language too it's very important you go to these universities and you check what language is their program in so look at the universities they are not even that much so just take your time research them one by one so let me choose like five universities for the sake of going forward now these are the six universities i chose yes you can choose up to six universities i know one or two around here but there are some that i don't know but i still put them like i don't know this oral federal university but let's just go with it so all these universities i chose they are very important in case if this one is not doing some of my courses maybe this one is doing it so this one might give me admission and so on so make sure you put a lot of these universities here as you know this is the first stage of the you know the whole process there are like three stages if you pass this stage 
they will send you an email to the second stage. So in this first stage, make sure you get more points in all these spaces. We already discussed them. Your portfolio, showed, like I showed you earlier, education, this is where you put your documents, motivation letter, make sure you try and craft a good motivation letter for all of them. It's not just one that you're going to use for all of them, but for three of them. If you don't know how to write motivation letters, there are a lot of videos on YouTube to guide you. Or if you know someone around you that has done it before, let him guide you. Or you know someone that is good at writing, let him guide you. Don't just go to AI for it to write it for you. Please try and find someone that can guide you. Try and do it yourself by working on it or someone to guide you. I think that's better than you just doing it yourself if you've not done it before. Then achievements, like we mentioned, try and add them here. Then entrance testing. Now, this test is not monitored, this first one. So try as much as possible to pass the test. After this stage, when you go to the second stage, the tests are going to be monitored. Yes, someone will be looking at you through your camera or they will record the whole test. Then later they will review it. So this test, try and pass it and then prepare for the next one. After you pass this stage, there is going to be material provided for you to study for the test. They have some demo tests that they give. I think after this, you're done and then you can click submit. Now, if you need more guidance on applying scholarships like this one and even more, check out this video where I give a full guide on how to apply scholarships, how to write some of these documents like motivation letter and so on. I hope you got a lot of value from this. Signing off now. See you on the next one.